welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 1 for December the 2nd, 2018. We begin a new unit today, Unit 1, entitled God Commands Our Love, Respect, and Obedience. And our topic for today is entitled Complete Devotion. The devotional reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark. Uh, chapter 12 verses 28 through 34 uh, background scripture is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 1 through 9 and that is our print passage today um, from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 1 through 9 our key verse reads love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength that is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6 uh, verse 5 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today number one is to explore the, the significance of the Shema uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 9 in both Jewish and Christian faiths. Uh, the second aim is to aspire to love God with all your heart, soul, and might and then the third aim is to commit to pass on God's statutes and ordinance to others, especially uh, to younger generations. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. First outline or, uh, is entitled, uh, Hear and Obey. Second outline is entitled, Love God. And then the third outline is entitled, Impress talk, tie, write. So we certainly thank and praise God for yet another opportunity to share uh, God's Word with you, to share some historical account uh, from the nation of Israel. And it's very important that we uh, learn uh, from history. Uh, history will either help us or it will injure us if we fail to heed the examples that um, God's Word has set forth. People who have traveled this journey uh, before you and I uh, ever undertook to um, to be uh, in the faith, to be a part of the body of Christ. Others have traveled these paths and uh, they made uh, significant progress or they failed. So we want to take a look today at this beautiful lesson. Uh, I want to read just a little bit of the biblical context that is associated with this lesson. Our focal scriptures are taken from the fifth book of the Old Testament and the last book of the law. It's original, uh, it's originated uh, from two Greek terms rendered second law. Uh, deutero which means second and nomos which means law uh, however in Hebrew it is called devarim meaning these are the words that is why some Bible scholars look at Deuteronomy not as a second given giving of the law but rather as a retelling with emphasis Moses is the writer except for the final verses that detail his death this book served as a transition from uh, Israel's wilderness journey uh, to their entrance into the promised land or the land of milk and honey. Uh, in Judaism the words Deuteronomy um, chapter 6 verses 1 through 9 are highly revered. Uh, they place emphasis on verses 4 and 5 called the Shema. Uh, and so we want to just make a few points about the book of Deuteronomy so we can understand uh, where we are. Uh, there is quite a bit of historical account uh, that we could read uh, and certainly I hope that you will take an opportunity to go back to uh, at least chapter 4 of the book of Deuteronomy and continue on through chapter 11. Uh, but uh, the book of Deuteronomy records Moses' farewell address to the second generation of Israelites uh, following the exodus from Egypt. 
The first generation had perished in the wilderness because of unbelief that God could lead them to conquer the inhabitants uh, of the land uh, of their destination. You can go back to um, Numbers chapter 14 uh, if you want to get more perspective about this. And so in chapter 5 of the uh, the book of Deuteronomy we see a reiteration of, of the Ten Commandments so um, uh, this is Moses introduction here so uh, Moses uh, uh, recapitulated the Ten Commandments and these were the basic uh, to the Mosaic Covenant given to Israel and express uh, man's duties to God and to his fellow man. So I want to make sure that we uh, at least understand the commandments and how they are broken down. We will run into several words that uh, 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 perhaps will uh, throw us off a little bit if we don't uh, understand what Moses was doing. But um, the summary of the first discourse, if you go back over to the fourth chapter, uh, the book of Deuteronomy declares uh, mosaic uh, authorship of, of this material and he divides the law into testimonies uh, declaring the Lord's will uh, so you might see that uh, when you're reading you also may run into the word statutes uh, and that just simply means that uh, uh, or that was expressing moral and spiritual duties uh, and then you might see the word judgments uh, indicating measures uh, designed to secure social justice. So this breakdown of the Mosaic law to the children of Israel uh, helped them to understand they uh, uh, had to be taught uh, coming out of uh, bondage in Egypt having been redeemed by God um, uh, they needed to be taught about their relationship with God and certainly they needed to be taught about uh, how they were to interact uh, with their fellow man. So we want to keep those things in mind as we go through this lesson today but it brought to mind uh, the importance uh, of sanctification. Uh, uh, you and I that, that are saved today uh, our salvation that we enjoy was at a cost. Uh, we didn't have to pay the cost, but we are the beneficiaries of the cost. Uh, we didn't have to shed any blood, but we are the recipients of the grace and the justification that that blood provided. And so uh, uh, having understood and understand where uh, God is with Israel and certainly with us as we move into uh, the New Testament. Uh, God, uh, his expectations were high uh, for the people that he redeemed, that he brought out with a mighty and an outstretched arm. So we want to get into these outlines today and we want to talk a little bit about them and hopefully we will uh, be able to understand and certainly be able to relate and, and we need to keep in mind that God's character has not changed. Uh, he is still commanding us. He is not suggesting it to us that we obey. He is commanding uh, uh, us to obey, uh, to love him, to obey him, uh, or, uh, to respect him, uh, and to, to be obedient and to comply with, with his laws and, and the guiding principles. And, and so uh, this first outline is entitled Hear and Obey. This is taken from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 1 through 3. Uh, and I want to read this from the uh, King James Version. The Bible says, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you uh, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. Verse 2 that thou mightest fear the Lord uh, thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life and that thy days may be uh, prolonged and then verse 3 
Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord uh, God of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth uh, with milk and honey. So here in the book of Deuteronomy uh, chapters 5 through 11, Moses uh, lays out uh, the basic framework of what God expected Israel's relationship with him to be. Uh, if we go back to chapter 5, Moses shared a retelling of the Ten Commandments. Next, in chapter 6, he shared God's call for Israel's total commitment to him. Uh, and so, we should understand that uh, these individuals, the nation of Israel, uh, as we read earlier, uh, this is the second generation, if you will, that Moses is uh, uh, preaching to, if you will, uh, so many of uh, the children of Israel that uh, uh, God rescued from Egypt died in the wilderness. You might look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It will also help you understand why they died and how many. Uh, there is some uh, an account there that will help us understand that a lot of them that um, didn't make it uh, into the promised land because of unbelief, because they questioned God, uh, even back over in the 14th chapter of the book of Numbers, they, uh, some of them would have, have rather gone back to Egypt uh, because they felt like uh, uh, perhaps that they didn't see a way that they could make it. So they desired to go back into bondage. But, but we, we see here that God is still reaching out uh, uh, through Moses, uh, uh, the mediator at that time, a, a type of Christ, if you will, uh, to work with the people, to pray for them, to encourage them uh, in helping them under, understand the relationship uh, that they are in with God and what he expects. Uh, this is nothing new to us, all of us that, that, that are saved. This is why we continue to go back and forth to the house of the Lord, to uh, a, a Sunday school and Bible class. What we're trying to do in addition to encouraging one another is to learn what pleases God, is to learn the relationship that we are in, uh, what the terms are, if you will. How does the Lord want us to walk? How does he want us to talk? How does he want us to live? How does he want us to conduct ourselves? These are things that are actively uh, going on in our lives. And this is what uh, uh, God is doing with, with the nation of Israel, even through Moses. Uh, 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 they had come out of bondage, but they had come into a relationship with God because he delivered them. He rescued them. And so he is requiring and laying down the foundations of, 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 of his expectations for his people. And all of us need to uh, uh, keep in mind that nearly all of the Israelites listening to Moses had not seen God's deliverance from Egypt uh, on the Red Sea Highway. They needed some precepts to teach them. Uh, fear, reverential fear of God. God was uh, not looking for a, a one generation relationship and that's something that we need to understand. Uh, we are in a covenant relationship with God. Uh, uh, the nation of Israel is in a covenant relationship with God. We just completed a comprehensive study uh, of the book of Genesis uh, going back to Abraham and, and this is where all of this has has come from uh, uh, these promises that uh, God made to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob and so now all of these descendants uh, uh, have come through uh, that lineage and God is continuing to work with them as he promised uh, uh, he would do so uh, verse 2 uh, uh, of our text today ends with a critical statement from God the Israelites would not enjoy long life without being obedient. Uh, Israel had already experienced the consequences of disregarding this warning during their wilderness journey. And, and again, back over in Numbers chapter 14, particularly verse 29. And we all have to be careful uh, about how we walk, even as Christians, 
and, and we suffer and we can lose our lives if we don't follow uh, the dictation of the Holy Spirit. That, that is why he is there. He is t- there to teach and he is there to warn and to admonish us to, to go into the paths or walk into the paths that God have laid out for us. And so verse 3 begins the first of, of two commands uh, from Moses to hear. This meant that the Israelites really needed to pay attention to what he was about to say. And so he did not want them to say later that they had not heard or had otherwise misunderstood God's decrees. And we have an, a problem with that today. We don't pay attention. Uh, we don't listen. We don't uh, adhere to. Uh, and, 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 and many times we end up with uh, many excuses as to why we didn't do, uh, or why, do you, why we didn't learn and why we didn't understand. And so this is very important uh, for us today as it was for Israel. Uh, they were literally, would literally cut their lives short by failing to hear or heed God's warning. Uh, they would literally be uh, 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 cutting their lives short if they failed to obey God. God is warning them and admonishing them how uh, to avoid death, how to avoid the, the pitfalls of life. And so, uh, God uh, expected the Israelites to make uh, religious education central to their family life. We could spend an eternity on that point. Uh, we, we as uh, 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 Christians today, we need to continue, uh, uh, and some of us need to actually start to educating ourselves, learning. Uh, didn't Jesus say that? Take my yoke up on you and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. So we need to pay attention to this historical account uh, uh, from Israel. Uh, and as I said in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul lays out an excellent example of this historical account of Israel in the, in the wilderness and how they failed to make it to the place that God promised they would go just because they complained, they murmured, uh, um, they didn't believe and so uh, uh, they fell short of making it to the place where God had promised to give them. And so uh, at a minimum we need to appreciate the fact that uh, a cost again has been made on our behalf. A debt has been paid on our behalf. A life uh, was sacrificed on our behalf. And so uh, uh, that we need to take into account uh, in terms of our relationship and never forgetting that cross. So uh, as we move to the question here in the quarterly, what does it mean to fear the Lord? your God, uh, to, to reverence him, to respect him, to honor him, to treat him as God. Uh, the book of Proverbs says this is the beginning of wisdom, uh, uh, is to fear the Lord. This is the beginning uh, uh, principles here, to reverence God as God. And so uh, when we get over into the book of Hebrews, I believe chapter 11, uh, uh, the writer there says to us that he who comes to God must first believe that he is uh, uh, and that he is a rewarder unto them that diligently seek him. And so we need to keep these things in mind. So our second outline is entitled Love God. This is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6 uh, verses 4 and 5. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Verse 5, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. So after an introductory statement in verses 1 through uh, 3, Moses 
prepared to share and define the great commandment. Again, he wanted the Israelites to pay attention uh, by calling them to hear at the beginning of verse 4. Because the Hebrew word for hear is Shema, the Jewish people refer to verses 4 and 5 as the Shema. Uh, what did uh, Moses uh, want the people to hear? First, that their Lord Yahweh, God, Elohim, Lord Yahweh is one. Uh, uh, Moses gave Israel the great uh, or greatest commandment. They were to love God totally with every fiber of their being. And so Jesus recounted this uh, uh, commandment in the New Testament. Uh, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. You can find it in Matthew chapter 22, uh, verses 37 and, and 38. So again, if someone uh, not familiar with Judaism wanted to understand the essence of this religious faith, all that person has to do was read verses 4 through 15, uh, and so they would have understood uh, since verse 4 begins with the Hebrew word Shema uh, translated here. The Jewish people refer to verses 4 through uh, uh, 9 as the Shema or Shema prayer. Uh, and so devout Jews repeat the Shema daily uh, uh, and it is included in every synagogue service. So look how that is important uh, to the Jew and so uh, uh, to us it doesn't matter the love is the same the love for God is the same uh, we should have uh, 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 an affection if you will uh, our heart uh, uh, should be totally committed uh, to loving God and, and didn't Jesus say that uh, uh, ask that or say that to his disciples, I believe in John chapter 14, uh, uh, if you love me, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And again, I, I, I say this because I know that this is an ongoing process that we are in in our faith. This is an ongoing struggle, if you will, uh, as we are pulled apart in every direction, our affections for God and our affections for uh, perhaps the world or other family members and things like that. We have to have some priorities uh, as it relates to our faith and, and, and all of these other things. So uh, all of our heart, God is commanding uh, that we love him with every fiber of our being. We should love his word. We should love the relationship that we're in with God and this is what God think about this from Israel's standpoint here's a people that have been in bondage uh, under Pharaoh they've been delivered a lot of them have died uh, Moses is now preaching to a second generation who absolutely know nothing about uh, uh, didn't see the historical account the, the, the deliverance that God brought about uh, but yet, uh, these individuals are commanded uh, and they should have learned and they should have been taught as to what God expected of them. And, and we have an obligation as people of God to teach our descendants, those who are coming after us, teach them how and share with them uh, your testimony if you will your faith journey how the Lord brought you out how he rescued you uh, and so we have a responsibility so at some point uh, if we could argue that the individuals that Moses is preaching to now perhaps didn't learn anything from their uh, predecessors they didn't learn anything uh, uh, from their ancestors, if you will. They didn't learn anything uh, uh, about God. And so Moses is reaching out to them 
to teach them this is what the Lord wants from us. And so we have to do that and we have to commit ourselves to that type of education where we are willing not to just uh, edify ourselves with it, but, but also to share it, also to teach it, also to admonish others who are coming on behind us, leaving footprints, faith prints, where people who are following us can see how we lived, how we walked up righteously before God, what it meant to be in a relationship. And, and we need to be living examples. If you really study into this lesson, God wanted the children of Israel to be examples in the entire world, uh, 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 on the world stage, if you will. And they failed to do that. Here the question is asked, we all remember our first love, and in many instances, people are no longer in their first loves. Would this example help explain why uh, some people no longer love the Lord like they used to? You know, when we get saved initially, when we first experience God and He delivers, and it 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 it's 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 like uh, 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 someone that has been set free, and we get that initial surge. Uh, and that boost, if you will, but as time go along, uh, goes along, sometimes we we start falling by the wayside. We start changing. We start being less consistent, uh, uh, less faithful, less loving. We we don't adhere to the Word of God like we used to. We don't pray like we used to. We don't fellowship like we used to we have to watch for those signs because uh, uh, these are some of the uh, issues that that uh, uh, Israel was being warned uh, to be faithful uh, uh, at obeying God for all of their life not some of it God wasn't interested in a part-time relationship God was not interested in uh, a partial faithfulness and partial consistency uh, any relationship uh, uh, that that has substance should grow should grow it, it should it should endure and so this is what has to happen uh, not just with with Israel certainly at this time but it has to happen uh, with us and this is the example uh, and just to, to qualify that point you recall prior prior to uh, uh, this redemptive act that God brought about with Israel. Look at all the years that they had been praying and calling on the Lord. They had been calling on the Lord year after year, day after day. Uh, uh, and so uh, uh, their captivity caused them to, to have fervent prayers uh, 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 unto God to be delivered. And so he delivers them and now we learn that something happened after they were delivered. Something happened after they were set free. Something happened in the relationship with God. The same God that delivered them, they began to complain. They began to murmur. They began to take God for granted. If he brought them out of Egypt, out of bondage, why couldn't he and why didn't they believe that God could have uh, moved them past the wilderness into the promised land? Why didn't they make it? It was not God that changed. It was the people that changed. I hope that uh, sort of illustrates the point that we or the question that was asked in the quarterly. And we have to monitor ourselves. And then we have to check on one another's faith. You don't hear that too much. But sometimes people are missing because something is happening in their relationship with God where they don't trust him like they used to. And, and, and we have to check on our brothers and sisters uh, uh, in Christ because all of us uh, get weak sometimes and then we all react differently. Uh, to our circumstance. So keep those things in mind. In Israel, uh, this historical account, we have a, a wealth 
of of uh, of, of history here to help us uh, avoid these mistakes, these pitfalls, if you will. And then the last outline is entitled "Impress, Talk, Tie, and Write." This is taken from Deuteronomy chapter six, verses six through nine. And from the NIV translation, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Verse 7, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Verse 9, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Why is God telling Moses to share this kind of information with Israel? Why is God emphasizing here through Moses that don't forget him? Why is God reiterating again that do something do something practical to remind yourself against the spirit of forgetfulness. Do something practical. Do something that, 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 that is a part of everyday life for you uh, and for me to remind yourself that God is the one that brought you out. That God is the one that delivered you. Uh, and, and we have to do, uh, uh, and this is, this is amazing here. He wants the children taught, right? He wants it to be in their heart. This is the seat of our affection. This is what our heart represents. This is where our loyalty is. This is where our loyalty rests. Uh, what are we uh, loyal to? Uh, and so the Ten Commandments, and this is the importance of knowing God's word for yourself having it in your heart as the psalmist says that that I might not sin against you uh, God is saying through Moses teach it to the children right talk about it when you're at home when you're walking uh, along on the road when you're sitting at home and you have nothing to do what do you talk about what do you talk about with the children uh, God wants to be on our uh, in our conversation or be the source of our conversation when we lay down and when we get up when we we you know when we get before we uh, go to sleep at night this is the the whole uh, concept about praying we're still talking to God even though we're getting ready to go to sleep and then when we get up in the morning uh, we thank you Lord for waking me up this morning so God wants us to remember him at night during the day, when we get up, when we're uh, doing our chores, when we're going about, God wants to be involved in every area of our lives. And that's what I get from this text here. God is not interested in something that just happens on a Sunday or one day. God is saying here, I don't want you to forget me. I don't want you to forget what I did for you. And so while the Ten Commandments recounted in the previous chapter were written on stone uh, tablets, God told his chosen people that the Great Commandment was written in their hearts. Uh, you can see some reference here back over in Jeremiah chapter 31 verses uh, 31 through 34. So it was never God's intent for the Jewish people to develop a comprehensive a set of rules and regulations that became the tradition of the Jewish religious leaders. Instead, he just wanted them to have their hearts right. How simple can that be? God wants our heart in the right place. Another thing that our heart speaks to is our motives. Why are we doing things? Uh, uh, why are we neglecting God? Uh, uh, what are we trying to get from God? All of these things that our heart uh, reveals to God. Uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 16 helps us to understand that God doesn't look at the outer appearances as man does, but he looks at the heart because it, it tells him everything he needs to know about who we are. 
what we are about, what we are loyal to, how we love him, how we neglect him. All of this speaks and comes out of our heart. You might also want to run some reference to the gospel according to uh, St. Mark chapter 7. He gives a, a great illustration of, of some of the attributes or characteristics uh, that come out of our heart. So we certainly thank and praise God for this lesson today. Very, very uh, uh, plain for us to understand. And so uh, God wanted these individuals, the, the, uh, Israel, to uh, uh, take moments to reflect on their teachings before they go to bed and upon waking up. And so it's very important that we look at this account um, and understand that your relationship, I said this, uh, I believe, a week ago to the Sunday school class. Our position in Christ means everything to us. And everything that we are trying to do, and even how we pray and how we are calling on the name of the Lord, we are using our position in the body of Christ to move us. Uh, from point A to point B. We are expecting God to do things in our lives, but God is looking at the position of our hearts. Where are we in the body of Christ? Where are we in the Word of God? Where are we in our obedience to God? And this is this lesson helps me look at the in the mirror at my own life. Where am I? What am I doing? Uh, uh, in, 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 in terms of obeying God. How am I treating this relationship that I am in uh, with God? And this is the point that God is making through Moses to now a second generation. So the question is asked here, what are some modern equivalents to the images of verses 8 and 9? And this sort of speaks to the uh, the phylacteries that uh, uh, in Jewish culture, these boxes that are uh, worn on the forehead uh, with the strap that uh, um, contain the, the laws of God. Whatever it takes, some of us wear uh, a crucifix around our neck. We uh, put on uh, uh, types of robes and uh, ministers, collars, and all of these different kinds of things. But uh, even though it is an outward form, it speaks to an inward expression. Uh, that robe that we wear, uh, it's an outer garment, but it expresses an inner garment uh, that we have on. And so if I have a cross around my neck, uh, that means it's laying on my heart. Uh, and so I'm, I'm sending a message to people who see a crucifix around my neck that Jesus is, is resting on my heart. And so there are lots of things that we do to remind ourselves that we are the people of God and that God has rescued us. Uh, uh, think about uh, Israel in Egypt uh, when uh, the death angel went through the land and, and, and God said, put some blood on your uh, doorposts. And when the death angel sees that blood, uh, he will pass by. Uh, and I believe today that you and I have blood on us as Christians. You and I have been marked. Uh, we have been labeled as people of God. We have been labeled as children of God. And you know that you have because the enemy tips his hand by attacking you helping you to understand that you are a child of God. That is why he is attacking you is because of the position that you are in as a child of God. And I hope you remember that today. I hope that this lesson encourages you today. Uh, there are so many other scriptures I could have shared with you today, but I want to leave you with Romans chapter 8. Uh, verse 14 and I think I want to go get that uh, because I want to encourage you with this uh, in terms of this law because I know that we are living in a day and a time where we don't like laws we don't like religious principles 
we don't like governing principles but I want to help you to understand today that you are still following a law it is not the mosaic law per se it is the law of the spirit Paul says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of God these are the sons of God so you still have a leader you still have governing principles you still have laws uh, uh, that are encompassed in the Holy Spirit whereby he is teaching you he is leading you and he is guiding you and if you are following the dictation of the Holy Spirit all Paul is saying here to us we are the sons of God I hope trust and pray that we have encouraged you today I want to leave you with just a prayer uh, that I might uh, encourage you today as I encourage myself father we thank you for this lesson today we thank you for what you have done we thank you for this example that you have uh, put forth that we can learn from uh, even from the mistakes of Israel we can learn about you we can learn about your word we can learn more about this relationship this covenant that we're in with you and father I just pray that you would bless each and every one that is under the sound of my voice you know the circumstances you know the frailties you know where they need you the most and we are praying father that you would look and have mercy upon us as a people help us to walk up righteously before you help us to keep the faith help us to be good soldiers and good stewards and help us to be faithful over the few things that you have given to us in the name of Jesus father we pray that you would forgive us of every sin that we have committed every thought every action that have frustrated the grace that you have so so lovingly dis, uh, uh, given to us and bless us to understand that that the cross that you sent your only begotten son Jesus gave his life and shed his blood that we might have this right uh, to the tree of life father we pray that you would help us to 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 embrace the cross in a deeper way in a loving way in a respectful way that you might get all the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus name we ask and pray amen so until uh, such time that the law will permit us to come together again we say God bless you <music>